Hey everybody, Mrs. Bodishan here. So today we're going to be talking about mole to mole stoichiometry and I'm going to make this as easy as possible. But first remember that whenever you see a chemical equation, you have to make sure it's balanced first so that we can get that mole to mole ratio correct. If you don't know what a mole to mole ratio is, let me explain. So if you look at this chemical equation, this one is balanced and we can double check by just counting our atoms. So two times two gives us four iron. We have four iron on our product side. Two times the three gives us six oxygen on reactant. And then the three times the two is six oxygen on our product side. And then we have three carbon and three carbon. So this is a balanced equation. Now we can look at our mole ratios. Never forget to balance your equation first. <clears throat> So um, the question says, what is the mole ratio between Fe2O3, which I went ahead and circled, and CO2, which is over here? So the mole ratio, you're just looking at the coefficient in the front, the very big number that's in the front. So for Fe2O3, that is 2, and for CO2, that is 3. So this is a 2 to 3 ratio. Now, let me show you. You can flip-flop these as needed in your bridge for stoichiometry a little bit later because they're going to be equivalent to each other since this is a balanced chemical equation. <clears throat> Let's try another one. This is the same equation, so we already know it's balanced. So what is the mole ratio between carbon and carbon dioxide? Well, here's carbon and here's carbon dioxide. So this is a 3 to 3 ratio, but we can't leave it that way. We can reduce it. So go ahead and reduce that to a 1 to 1 ratio. All right, one more. Check and see if this is balanced. Go ahead and pause it. Okay, and this one is balanced. Now let's look at our question. What is the mole ratio between Mg and Mg3P2? Go ahead and pause this and see if you can get it right. All right, let's look at our answer. So Mg is right here and we have three, and then Mg3P2 is right here. There's nothing in front of this one, which means it's an understood one. So our ratio is gonna be a three to one ratio. And remember, when needed, we can turn them upside down and flip flop it for our bridge, okay? Okay, so we have a new roadmap for stoichiometry. You can um, see so you need to start at a green block and you need to end at a red block. For this video, mole to mole, we're just gonna be focusing on starting at moles and ending at moles. So we're crossing one arrow, which means we have one T in our bridge. In other words, this is a one step problem. Let me show you. <clears throat> How many moles of Fe would be produced if seven moles of Fe2 reacted? And we're gonna assume there's an excess of carbon. You always start with what you're given. Um, but first, is it a balanced reaction? This is the same one we've been working with, so it's balanced, okay? Now we can start with what we're given. Seven moles of Fe2O3. Remember, diagonal down is always the same units. So this says Fe2O3, which means this one is gonna be Fe2O3. And all we have to do is look in our balanced chemical equation for Fe2O3 and see that number up front. The coefficient, that's our moles. So we have two. So that's gonna be a two on the bottom. The number up top, it's gonna be where the question is asking you for. So the question says, how many moles of Fe? That means we're gonna have moles of Fe up top. So we need to look for Fe, which is right here, and it is four. So the top is gonna to be four moles of Fe, and the bottom is gonna be two moles of Fe2O3. Now we can cancel out those units, and we're ending up with moles of Fe, which is perfect, that's exactly what we want. So now we can do our math. We're gonna multiply the top, so seven times four, and then divide by the bottom, divide by two, and you end up getting 14 moles of Fe. Let's do another one. Uh, it says, how many moles of Fe would be produced if 11.6 moles of carbon reacted? We're assuming an excess of Fe2O3, and this is the same equation still, so we still know it's balanced, so we can move on to our bridge. Go ahead and pause this and see if you can get this one correct. <clears throat> All right, let's check it out. Start with what you're given, 11.6 moles of carbon, which means diagonal down has to be moles of carbon. So we need to look for carbon, it's right here. So it's three, so there's gonna be three moles of carbon on the bottom. The top is what the question asks you for. How many moles of iron? So I look for iron and that's right here and it is four. 
four moles of iron and we said the bottom was three moles of carbon. Now we do our um, crossing out of units and we are left with moles of iron. Perfect, exactly what we want. Now we can do our math. 11.6, we're gonna multiply that by four and then divide by three and we end up getting 15.47 moles of iron. Okay, I want you to try this one start to finish. It says, how many moles of HCl are needed to react with excess of Na2S produces 3.7 moles of H2S. Here's your equation. Pause the video and see if you can get this one right start to finish. All right, let's go ahead and look at the answer. First things first, is it balanced? It is not balanced, so you had to balance this one first. If you didn't, you probably got the answer incorrect, okay? Because you need the right mole ratios. Here it is all um, balanced for you. All you needed to do was add a two in front of the HCl and a two in front of the NaCl, and then you are balanced and good to go. So let's take a look at our bridge with our balanced chemical equation. You start with the 3.7 moles of H2S, diagonal down is moles of H2S, and we need to look for that one. Here's H2S, and we have nothing in front, which means it's a one, right? It's an understood one. And then what do we want to find? How many moles of, Cl of, of HCl? So we look for HCl and it is a two. So put that two in front. Now we can cross out our units, perfect, and we can multiply the top. So 3.7 times two divided by the one gives us 7.4 moles of HCl. Last one, you guys. Try this one start to finish. Pause the video um, right after I get done reading it. How many moles of AgOH are produced when 3.72 moles of CaOH2 are reacted with an excess of AgNO3? So go ahead and pause this and do it start to finish. All right, let's go ahead and look at the answer. So first, is it balanced? It is not, and this was a pretty simple one to balance though, right? We only needed a two in front of the AgNO3 and a two in front of the AgOH. Now we can take that balanced chemical equation and solve our bridge. So start with what you know, 5.72 uh, moles, moles of the CaOH2, which means diagonal down has to be moles of CaOH2. So we look for that and that is right here. We have nothing in front, which means it's an understood one. The top is gonna be what it's asking for. How many moles of AgOH? Here is AgOH and we have two, so go ahead and put that in. Cancel out your units. Now let's solve. We're gonna do 5.72 uh, times two and then divide by one and we get 11.44 moles of AgOH. I hope this was so helpful understanding moles to mole stoichiometry, you guys. If you like this, go ahead and uh, hit that like button for me. Subscribe to see more stoichiometry or any other thing that you need chemistry related. Bye, everybody.